I've been busy working all night And I'm telling everybody I'ma get it right They know what I'm living like I've been busy going all out all right, good morning, everybody. Today's the day for the big reveal. We are gonna let you know who is going to be staked in the World Series of Poker main event by yours truly. Uh, later tonight, I'll be playing the Stud 8 Omaha 8 tournament. Uh, starts at three o'clock. I'll be going late. I'm gonna go to the gym first. Lately, there haven't been a lot of tournaments that I've been super excited about. This is a fun one, but it's a little bit of a lower buy-in. My favorite type of event to play typically is a 10K mixed game event with about 100, 150 players. Uh, we had some PLOs this week. We had a big, really big fields, 200, 400 players in the 10Ks. And then I'm really gearing up for Sunday because that's the play Poker Players Championship, which is my favorite event to play in, as I've mentioned several times. So let's just get to the decision because I don't know. I can't put this off any longer. I don't know how to pick. I just, I've been struggling with it. Uh, obviously, a lot of feedback from different people about who I should pick. And ultimately, I just don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. So uh, I've come up with something that you guys are not going to like, but it's the only way that I'm, I just really can't pick. So what I've done is I have three cards here, right? Each card represents... Uh, one of the three finalists. This here, of course, is Tanya. This here is Richard. And uh, this here is gonna be KL. I'm gonna mix these cards up, and whichever card flies off the top is the person that is going to get staked by yours truly. <laughs> this is so stupid. I can't believe I'm doing it this way. All right, off the top, we have, you tell me, Tanya! All right, Tanya, you've won your way into the World Series of Poker. We'll see you soon. Pack your bags. Get ready. Let's kick some butt. And I just want to say I'm sorry to the other two uh, finalists and everyone else who, you know, couldn't get picked. But, you know, the promotion was clear. We could only do one seat um, for this. So one player, and that player is going to be Tanya. I mean, so many deserving ones. And I don't know, man. Something doesn't feel right about this, right? Like, she seems deserving, but so does... He, and so does he. Coming up with an idea, y'all. <laughs> I think I have an idea. So, you know, the rules said one C. But ever since I was a little kid, I've kind of been a rules breaker, right? I, uh, I didn't even done finish high school, right? So what the hell, let's just break the rules. I have a new idea. Okay, we're gonna pick. All three of y'all, all three of y'all, three seats. Screw it. Bring them all. Pack your bags. See you soon. Let's kick some ass. One, two, three in the World Series of Poker. Let's make some dough, some cash, some money. Yeah. All right, that's what we're doing. We're going to stake all three of you guys. Congratulations to all three. Uh, we'll have my people reach out to you guys to set up logistics and whatnot. But I'm super happy for you guys, and I uh, hope you guys really enjoy the experience. And uh, hope to meet you soon. film you and you don't look good. I never do that. I haven't done it once. Like I've never not filmed you. I've never filmed you when you just look like a train wreck. Today's train wreck. You think you look like a train wreck today? I do. Okay, I won't film you then. I would never do that. So huh? I'm not doing it. You look great. I don't know. I'm not even filming. I'm just pretending to film. You this won't this won't remember, thousands of people won't see this. I'm single. Uh-huh. And like to like meet someone I probably shouldn't look like a shit. Well remember we were just talking just about so makeup. Remember how we were just talking about makeup and how like it's not important for for your own beauty and blah blah blah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Join this, say it's only that. Call the shit quiz, but can take that back. Say it's only this, and you say it's only that. Throwing all your chips in, but can take that back. On to the next hand again. Shit, never really going as planned again. Y'all putting me to sleep like Ambien, and everything in this life just gambling. But fuck it, oh. look, I'm already rambling. New music, I know that they demanding it. While you faking, you plastic like mannequins. Until I drop new shit, they all panicking. But look, I know I'm better than your favorite rapper. I'm fresh and I'm fly like, oh my man, I'm dapper. Make free music now collect the money after i'm good and i flow but they say it don't matter oh. really they comment but none of it flatters i climb to the top but i don't see the ladder say i'm too distant i'm not and they'd rather have me fit a mold but i'm not marshall mathers like shit i'm all at the breath i don't even know what i have got left cooking up dope cause your boy young chef on that eisenberg flow here enjoy your blue math here enjoy your blue math let me in for one time let me in for one time one time
Mr. Christian Sanchez. Okay, so Christian, a lot of people have been asking me, like, if you had to describe your job description here in the Kid Poker Enterprises, what would you say you do for a living? Well, there's about eight or nine jobs. <laughs> it started with golf. Okay. Golf coach, instructor, playing partner. Uh, we don't have those big money matches like we used to, but uh, that's still still job number one. But I also ran Poker VT for a couple years. Let's see, I manage the Tesla, I manage the horses. <laughs> yeah, I get the money to the horses. Uh, IT guy, uh, now video producer, editor. Uh, <laughs> music man. Music man. He picks the music, so if you guys hate the music, it's this guy. My fault. I love the music, so there's that. <laughs> now, people have you down as my personal trainer, that's not a thing. No. Nope. No. Nope. Workout partner. Right, I created yeah. the workout today. So basically, he's an all around athlete. He also does real estate. Yes. Right? So, how do people get a hold of you if they want to buy a house in Vegas? Christian S at kw.com. Christian S at kw.com. Okay, go sell some houses. I don't, I'm hoping he doesn't sell too many because then he might just quit. <laughs> quit on me. <laughs> you know, I always say it's important to have uh, good people around you, and I got some great people around me. One of those people being Christian Sanchez. I mean, you talk about in 2017, a guy, you know, married his high school sweetheart, has three beautiful daughters, great father, like always practical, logical, you can trust him with pretty much, well with anything, literally. Uh, great to have him on the team and he's been so versatile through the years in terms of like uh, what he's done both as a friend and uh, an employee if you will. It doesn't feel like an employee, he's just a buddy who I happen to help out, but uh, man, he's on the ball, good to have him on the team. You should all be so lucky as to have a friend like Christian. Ask around, anybody who knows Christian, it's like, yep, <laughs> they'll agree. All right, a little after 6.20, we are headed down to the Rio. But before we do, guys, I want to know, who are you grateful for? All right, it was something I was thinking about, actually, after leaving the gym. You know, I talked a little bit about Christian and how, you know, how grateful I am to have his friendship and the fact that he works for me. And uh, there's a few other people I thought about. I was just seeing, you know, Patty was by today, my assistant who's been with me. Uh, when I was married, I was I was actually yeah, married when she became my assistant. Crazy, right? I was married. Um, and, you know, she's been with me through thick and thin, handles a lot of, you know, important stuff for me and has for many, many years. And, you know, she obviously has my trust. And I'm very thankful to have her. Joel Voorhees is another guy who... You know, he basically cooks for me and, uh, you know, just makes amazing vegan meals and stuff like that and, you know, become a good friend as well. You know, in the mornings he comes over and we talk about what's happening in the world and how to make a difference and all that sort of thing. You know, he, of course, you can't forget Marissa. I'm grateful for her opening up my heart because, you know, when it comes to relationships and all that kind of stuff, that is, I guess, I don't know if weakness is the right word, but it's not been like a major focus of my life. And she opens up a different side of me that gets me more vulnerable and connected to people. Um, of course, my brother and his wife were Nella, man. I'm, I'm just lucky to have a brother like that. I know that my comments were twisted in one of the recent vlogs about my brother, but man, he's just protective. I mean, he'd do anything for me. You know, it's like a lot of people talk about, you know, hey, man, I take the bullet for you. Well, I'll tell you what, I know one person in the world who actually would, like, for real, like, not just as a saying, but my brother, I know it. He would jump in front of a bullet for me because he's just like, we have a you know, deep love and a, a bond like that. Um, you know, another person who was like really important in my life in the last five years as well is Robin Williams, who she runs that um, course I did called Choice Center, which I did four years ago, which really kind of opened up my eyes in terms of like what kind of person I could be in this world, how much more I could be giving. And like I, when I, before I went to the course, I was doing fine. My life was great. I had money, I had you know, happiness, all that kind of stuff. But then I realized like just going through it, like, man, I can do so much more. And, you know, part of the inspiration for this vlog is based on a vision that I created for my life that really was spawned during my time at Choice Center, realizing like I could live a much bigger life. Like that, that I could, have, that just the being that I am, I have a choice. My choice is I can be a cancer to a room. I can just be destructive. I can slam things. I can be negative or I can inspire. And it really is that much of a choice. I've been given a platform in this world to, um, you know, send a message and I can choose what that message looks like, right? I choose to inspire. I want people to live bigger and better lives. So I don't know, guys, think about somebody that you're grateful for and uh, let me know in the comments. I mean, I imagine some of you will, you know, talk about your kids, some of your family and other things like that, but um, always good to take a moment and think of the things that, or the people in our lives that we're super grateful to have around us. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about a strategy shift going forward. Okay, so going forward for the World Series of Poker, essentially my focus is going to be 
about, and this is strange for me because it's never really been the case for me. It's gonna be about money, <laughs> like actual money. Um, I have a lot of bets riding on the 25K Fantasy. So my main focus right now is on the team, right? What is gonna be in the best interest of the team? Uh, for me, that doesn't mean playing in large field events because the way that we structure the 25K point system, it's very, you get a lot of points for final tables. It's really a 10K final tables, min caches are basically worthless. You know, like you min cache an event, you get one point. It's not really gonna you know, move the needle much. So the bigger field events is something, well, I, I avoid them anyway. I think I've played up to now about 23 events so far, none of which have been uh, any of the no limits, 15 or lower, just uh, typically the high buying mixed game events. So I play compared to the grinders, you know, who play the full slate, <laughs> less than half the events they do. And now I'm going to target very, very like uh, consciously which events I'm going to play. And, and the 50k is obviously one that's going to tie me up for about five days, but it's a short field event worth a lot of points. And uh, we're playing for money, we're playing for points, we're playing for bracelets. We had to make a little renegotiation at this point in the World Series with just a few weeks left. And uh, and that's gonna be our focus. Sometimes when you set a goal, right? And you're off track, um, you have to look at, you know, okay, let's make a renegotiation at this point, right? So three bracelets is going to be very, very difficult considering I may not even play, well, I might not play more than three, four events. So the goal now is uh, we're gonna make it one. We're gonna renegotiate now because it's getting a little late. So the goal is to leave the World Series with one piece of gold. The goal is to get my fantasy team to the number one spot, to root on my friends, to root on you know Brandon Jack Harris and the PLO and Brock Parker and Popcorn and you know and, and the rest of them because uh, we're still in the running for that. We're in second place, so we're gonna give it our all to get that money, win all those side bets, and yeah. And then of course gear up for the 50k main event. I've already said that. Cool. So, ready to go. Like I said, about 6.30. We're gonna play the $2,500 Omaha 8 Stud 8. We're skipping the 5K. It's not a good event for the point system. Uh, it started earlier. I could late reg that. I could see, typically, if, if you were gonna grind hard, you'd play the 5K no limit, try to run up a stack, and then you know play the other one if you bust. I'm not doing that. I actually, in the last five years, I haven't once been in an event and another event at the same time. Like, I haven't double bag. I haven't double dipped at all. Like I focus on one event at a time. If I happen to bust that event and I can still late reg, I do so. I don't drop stacks. I don't burn money, as they say. It makes sense to burn money, and I call it burning money when you're double stacking because you really are burning money uh, in equity. It only makes sense if you've got really big side bets, right? If you have really big side bets, uh, you know, on something along those lines. But my side bets are point based, so. I know what I'm doing here. We're just gonna focus on the big event, big buy-in event, the big buy-in short field events against the best players in the world, which is why I come to the World Series. Everyone comes for a different reason. Uh, I, I've always enjoyed the World Series of Poker because it was an opportunity to play against the elite in their games of choice. So that's typically why I choose to play those events, and I love it. It's fun, and I continue to have fun with it, and I have for the last 20 years, and I plan to have fun with it for the next 50. It may look different next year. Um, I think I'm probably gonna play an even more reduced schedule even less events than you know that I have in the past. Probably, I mean, if it, maybe like as, as little as five. We'll see how it goes. I'll, it'll depend on a few things. But yeah, I'm excited to play this 08, 08 Stud 8 because it's one of my favorite two games, really. And I've done well in it this year, both. All right, just about 7.30. We're gonna make it in for level five. Ain't it always the way that when you, know, you talk about gratitude and people you're grateful for that you always forget somebody? <laughs> my man, Brian Ballsball, can't forget that one. He's my manager, confidant. You know, any poker issues that have come up over the years when we take a position on, we usually like go over and have a lot of trust and faith in his views on things. And we've been close for, man, it's been a lot of years now. Been there through the poker boom and since through the Black Fridays, through you name it. And uh, so I didn't want to forget him. Mr. Balls Balls. Level, who knows what, six. Um, had my chips up from 12.5, a little over, I don't know, close to 20,000. Then um, got scooped in an Omaha 8 pot. And then uh, an Omaha, another Omaha 8 pot. I had the nuts on the turn with a low. And the board paired and completed the flush. Uh, so I was no longer ahead in either direction. So now we're down to like 3,000 in chips, playing six and 1,200. So. 
Uh, gonna need to get lucky here. Otherwise, we have a, another potential night of relaxation, which wouldn't be the worst thing in the world because, you know, it's been 30 days or so and I'm tired. Chips, huh? Good chips. <laughs> you play good, huh? <laughs> you finish? Ah, huh, you dachi. You finish? I finish. No, I bluff. I bluff too much. Suka. Suka. Skatina and suka. Okay. <laughs> I would describe our chances tonight in this $2,500 Omaha 8 stud 8 in terms of the way that it went. Uh, my chance around zero percent. <laughs> It just didn't win any hands. So, uh, out, obviously, you know, would, be a, would have been a good event to show up on time for, but I've hit a wall once again. Hang on, sorry. I gotta switch hands, y'all. Hit a wall here, uh, fatigued. It's always a bad sign when you're down to your last couple chips and the guy like has a flush draw and part of you is like, oh man, just hit the damn flush. <laughs> Cause I don't want to come back here with one stinking bet. So. Uh, the end of the night, and then tomorrow there is a another just kind of like new event. It's a big bet mix. It's never been done before. It's going to be strange. This could be a really poor turnout, I think. Even though it's just a $2,500 buy-in, I think it might do really, really badly because of the mix that it is. Um, I'm going to call it the Brian Rast Invitational because it's basically uh, a bunch of the games they play over at Aria in a big bet mix. Uh, I just don't think there's a lot of players that, that play most of these games in this format. So it's like maybe a, a poll of like 30 people. So anyone else entering this tournament is gonna be like clueless as to play half the games, I would think. Uh, especially like five card draw and a pot limit triple draw. But uh, I think it could be fun. So I'm gonna give that a shot and have some fun. And then of course that would be the last event before Sunday night's 50K, which I plan to be very well rested for and give uh, a much better effort than I have probably in the last couple tournaments in terms of focus and really being present. Been uh, a little distracted by some stuff, so, you know, a whole bunch of things going on here at the World Series Poker. And again, just events that I didn't really care too much about. Although I did check that PLO hand when I got it all in the other day, I did the math on it and it was, it was a good call. <laughs> it was actually correct. So even uh, though I'm not as like focused as I should have been in that tournament, and this one as well, um, I don't think I played badly. I think I still made good decisions. So that's a positive. Um, fatigue's an issue, but we're gonna get some rest tonight and late reg tomorrow. And then of course we got the 50K. That's the one to win, 50K Players Championship. Have a good one, guys.